Um, our next innovator, David J. Penny, is executive director of, <laughs> now, of Corrugated Steel Pipe Institute with his presentation. Now, when they actually sent me the name of this presentation, I actually thought my spell check had gone, you know how they sometimes flip words, but no, it's actually, this is the presentation. His presentation, Polymer-Coated Structural Plate Fish Ladder for Perched Culverts. That makes sense to you people? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, none of those words should be in a sentence together. You realize that, right? <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Okay. Well, hopefully that will make sense to all of you in a few minutes when, I, when I'm finished with the presentation. But uh, I'm Dave Penny. I'm the executive director of the Corrugated Steel Pipe Institute. And most of you will know us. We're a, a trade association. Uh, we have member companies who manufacture corrugated steel pipe across Canada. Uh, some of them are here in the trade show, and I hope you'll visit them. Uh, companies like Armtech, Atlantic Industries, Frontier Construction Products. So some of the things I'll talk about, you'll have a chance to catch up with them in the trade show or in your own neighborhoods because they're across Canada. Uh, what I do, uh, my job is to promote corrugated steel pipe as an industry. And doing that, I typically work with just about everybody in the room here and their departments sharing things, innovating, creating things, working on specifications, working at universities, uh, doing presentations, but that's what we do. Uh, we say that really our, what we're all about is helping and working together on the management of soil and water. And when we think about water, water is something that really defines what all of us do. Water is Canada. And the interesting thing about water is very often it's the barriers that we see that create the greatest opportunities, the greatest beauty, the greatest opportunities. But not all of those barriers are natural barriers. Some of them we've created ourselves, and, but there's opportunity here. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunity. We've been doing this for over 100 years. Uh, corrugated steel pipe was introduced in 1908 and we started manufacturing it right here in Winnipeg. So we've been manufacturing the product, or our members have, for over 100 years. And admittedly, within 100 years, a lot of things get tired. A lot of our, uh, a lot of our installations are reaching the end of their service life. They're at a stage now where they need to be repaired, replaced, or upgraded. Huge opportunity, and there's a lot of that throughout the country. But there's also another opportunity here, another challenge here, and this is a, these are a couple of large diameter culverts in, uh, near Cape Spear, Newfoundland at Maddox Cove. These are 2,400 millimeter diameter pipes. They have, they're elevated. These were built, and whether it was like this when they were built or this has happened over time, they were built and the, there's a, a perched outlet. You'll notice that the water tumbles out the side. It's very outside, it's very pretty, but it blocks the passage of fish upstream. This was originally a, a stream where Arctic char and uh, sea trout uh, migrated, they, they came up the stream, they would spawn there and uh, produced a wonderful fishery. But when this happens, the fish can't migrate. It's a huge problem. And unfortunately, it's a problem that's very widespread across Canada. There are thousands of these things. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to take $100,000 and put that in your budget and do that every year for the next several years. And what I want you to do is have your people go out and find these things and fix them. Okay? And I'm going to ask everybody in the room to do the same thing. I mean, that's, that's really what this is all about. These are out there. You have to take the time consciously, go and find them and fix them. Now, we've done a lot of things in 100 years. We've put, developed new coatings. Uh, this is a demonstration test installation from New Brunswick, New Brunswick DOT. This is aluminized steel. This is steel that we can put in the, this type of water and get 100 years of service life without problem. Very different from the product we started out with back in 1908. But we're working with DOTs to develop and prove these things to innovate. Uh, we've done a lot of work with respect to fish. We know that we can put things inside of culverts, fish baffles, uh, sediment uh, collectors. We know that corrugations on their own will slow up the flow of water. They'll collect uh, gravels, and they will encourage the passage of fish. Uh, we can rehabilitate, so we don't have to replace. We can, we can uh, replace the structure, but we can also 
uh, put new inverts, new concrete inverts. We can reline using tunnel liner plates, slip liners. Uh, we can build new uh, uh, inverts in the structures with fish ladders and, and uh, create a make, make these things a lot better without uh, reconstructing. Of course, we can do things like this. This is what we're very proud of. Uh, this is a structure in uh, Chilliwack, British Columbia. I don't know if any of you know where that is, but, uh, but uh, out there we have a salmon spawning stream, a new subdivision. And it's very clear that if you're going to build here, we don't want you mucking up the water. We can now build these structures. We expect one day to build these to 40 meter spans. It means that we can build these structures outside of the stream. We don't have to go in the stream. We don't have to cut down the trees. We don't have to uh, change it in any way. So these open bottom structures uh, are a way that we can deal with this fish migration issue in a very positive way. Uh, we do a lot of research. Uh, we have invested quite a bit of money. Uh, University of Saskatchewan, uh, we've installed a, uh, in their hydraulics lab, we have a, uh, a large pipe where they can test the flow of water and the effect of corrugations, and some very excellent papers written. These studies are usually done in conjunction with inland waters, DFO, of course with the university, papers with the Canadian Society of, of uh, Civil Engineers. We have a similar flume right here in, in Winnipeg at the University of Manitoba where we do the same kind of studies. And I have an, on an ongoing study right now, which I'll talk about a little later, at the University of Sherbrooke where we're looking at uh, this product with the long, the long name that uh, Simon described to you. So, you know, it's fishing. You know, fishing is a big deal, right? Fishing is a big deal. Sports fishing is huge. Sports fishing is worth $1.6 billion to our economy. But only about 10% of that is fishing tackle. The, the bulk of it, three quarters of it, is made up of uh, food, lodging, and transportation. So this is big dollars that is affecting us quietly. It's something we need to deal with. Uh, 3.2 3 million fishing licenses are sold a year. That's where they sell licenses. Some provinces, you don't need a license. And of course, if you're under 16 or over 65, you don't need it. We're talking about a lot of people that can be affected by positive action from all of you. And the other statistic, which is the obvious one, well, sorry, there's a bunch of, we sell a lot, a lot of licenses outside of the country, but the biggest, most obvious one is that people fish where there's fish. So if you can improve your, your the movement of fish in your province, you can attract people to, uh, to your location. This, though, is huge. This is new. We uh, make structural plate uh, culverts. These are the large ones. And up until a few years ago, we could only do this in galvanized steel. And the galvanized steel is great. It's a great product. But unfortunately, a lot of the rivers and streams that we work in where there are fish, uh, those waters tend to be corrosive and abrasive to galvanized steel. So we wanted to do something, and what we've developed, and this is with the help of some of your, some of the DOTs, uh, MTQ has been particularly helpful on this and some of the testing. Uh, we have developed a polymer coating to put onto plate that essentially lets us go back into the water. So we can build these large structures, we can put them in the water. Uh, the color is great. Uh, it's a color that fish like, and we've also done all the testing to make sure that it's not going to hurt the fish. So very positive, but it's a product that we are very, very excited about. So, you know, what are you going to do when you get an innovation like this? We're going to do a lot of things with it, but a few years ago in Toronto, I don't know if you were at the show in Toronto, some of you will know this guy, I met him at TAC. I won't tell you how we met, but it was wonderful, and, and I found out what he does. I don't know if you know Ken Hannaford, he's the Environmental Science for, Newfound for Newfoundland. This guy knows more about fish than fish. He's a, uh, he built the Flavarium, the under, under, under the building uh, aquarium in St. John's. Brilliant guy. So I thought, you know, I've got this idea that I can do something with this polymer coated plate, that I can, uh, uh, I can build something. So I said, why don't I go and talk to Ken, because he really knows fish. There's a lot of other people that do. We work with Dana Becker up in uh, Alberta and a few other people, but Ken's your man when it comes to fish. Now, he's a very practical guy. He'll, he'll frustrate me sometimes. Ken will just as happily pile rocks. He'll go out and pile a bunch of rocks, as he's done here. The fish go and everything's fixed, and that's great. But that isn't always the answer. Sometimes that's time consuming, quite expensive. But if this works, do it. But can we come up with something else? 
So I said to Ken, we can do this. We can do this now. This is, this is a DFO fish baffle. It's been around since 2002. I said, I've got this new coating. We can fabricate it in black steel. We can do all these wonderful things in steel. And he said, great, but I don't like this baffle. And that it works fine, but he doesn't like the design. So what's wrong with it, Ken? And he says, well, the problem is uh, we find we get higher velocities coming through the thalweg that, down the middle of the stream, and big fish can get through, but the little ones, this is, you know, the little ones, they get stuck. And what happens is the big fish eat them. It's kind of like a smorgasbord, and there's a problem. But we can do better. So I said, well, show me. So on a napkin, we sat down, and he drew something that looked like this. It looks a little bit like Gene Gang's big building in Chicago, very, you know, flowing lines and soft lines, and uh, something that mimics the natural sinuosity of a stream. Beautiful stuff. I mean, it's, it's like poetry when you're working with this guy. But this is it. This is a baffle. I'm going to call it the Hannaford baffle. And we've got away from that square slot. We've gone to more rounded shapes. Uh, we're spilling water, which will allow small fish to pass. Brilliant stuff. So what we proposed was why don't we take this thing and build something that looks like this. A waterproof uh, series of stacked pools or a fish ladder that we can bolt onto the end of any perch culvert and uh, have the fish make the next spawning run. And it's important, because fish only spawn once a year. You want to do that quickly. You want to do it f so we talked about this, and we're all set to do it. In fact, we said, why don't we base our design on that first picture, that one at Maddox Cove in Newfoundland. We'll do some calculations there. But just to do that is, is a lot of money just to take the chance. So we said, let's see if we can model this. So we went to, I had been a uh, lecture at the University to Sherbrooke two or three years ago and met a young, ambitious guy, tapped me on the shoulder looking for work, and we talked about this idea. That's how long it's taken. And uh, I said, why don't we do some research? So he said, well, we could. We can, uh, there's some very, very good software out there that we can rent. It's expensive, and we can put together a, a program, and we'll have a look at this, and we'll work with you. So we put some money up, the Corrugated Steel Pipe Institute. We had some funding from the American Iron Steel Institute. We put it, gave it to the university. They multiplied that. They went out to the uh, NSERC, the National Science and Engineering Research Council. They multiplied our contribution by five times, and they did this. So I said, well, the first model I want you to do, I want you to do the DFO model uh, for that site, and uh, let's just see if Hannaford has any idea what he's talking about. I didn't say it quite like that, but I, but I just wanted to test it. Look at the colors on the screen. See the red coming down through the slot? What we've learned is that red is just exceeds the critical nose velocity for little trout. Okay, big trout can get through that, but little ones can't. So he's right. Notice the blue color along the corrugations. We've got all this research talking about the benefits of corrugations and slowing down the water and the gravel. Look at the blue, it's there. It showed up beautifully. So we said, okay, now let's do it for the new design. Let's see what we're talking. We ran this, very different, very dramatic. We've changed the way the water flows. The velocities have changed. It's, it's, we believe the fish will get through. Now we have to still tweak this a bit, but that's where we're going with it. It's a, it's a design and we do have the mathematical modeling to be able to design for any site, adjusting the slopes and the flows and all of the details of the sites. So what two we're minute, gonna do, two minute warning. and we're trying to get the approvals to do it, and we expect to do this now in the spring, is build this structure at Maddox Cove. So it will look, uh, look very much like this. Uh, and uh, we're quite excited. We've, we've taken a few liberties with it, and we don't quite know what might happen, but this is what we expect to do at, uh, at Maddox Cove. And, and what we've done is we've agreed to put up the materials for this, but now we're looking at the government of Newfoundland Newfoundland Highways who are working with to bring some of the labor and the work in the site and make it possible for us. Two so, minutes, David. what I'm asking, two minutes. What I'm asking of you, what I'm asking of all of you, again, this is about commitment. Okay, it's, it's a long term thing. This, this is something that will not only affect generations of fish, it will affect our, all of our generations. Uh, summing it up, this is my eldest grandson in his great-grandfather's canoe. This fishing thing goes on you know, for generations and generations. What I'm asking for is $100,000 in your budget next year and for many years thereafter to go out 
to find these challenges and fix them. And that's what it's all about. And if you need to contact me, this is me. No, it's not. I'm actually in the picture, but <laughs> this is me. Or I encourage you to go and speak with ArmTech, Atlantic Industries, Frontier Construction Products, ES Hubble and Son back in Ontario. They're the ones that will have to do the hard work. Thank you. Thank you, David. <clears throat> I'm also looking for $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got three minutes, Dragons. Who wants to go first? Yes. Okay. Um, I thought it was great. I thought your presentation was good. I love the pictures giving practical examples. And yes, I did like to see some of the engineering details. So thank you. Um, and I guess I had a question, though, with respect to inside the pipes. So if you're um, having, you, so you place this, how do you monitor performance of the fish ladder over time? And how do you make sure that those though aren't filling with debris and sort of what kind of maintenance and well, is involved good point. in this. I mean, one, of the, one of the points of the Hannaford design was he feels that there'll be less issues with clogging because clogging is okay. a problem with the DFO one. Right. However, the concept of debris is positive. We're trying to uh, replicate a natural stream. So you, you want some debris, some gravels and things to, to, to settle in the, in, the, uh, in the stream. Now, reality, a lot of these don't get, they're all over, all over Canada, so you don't get there. The exciting thing about Maddox Cove is it's right at Cape Spear. It's a, it's a World Heritage Site. People can go and visit it. It's very close to St. John's. It's in Greater St. John's. So we'll be, that particular one, we'll be able to monitor and see if, you know, what adjustments have to be made. But yes, all culverts do need to be looked at. They need to be maintained, particularly after the big flood events. We have to go in and clear them out. We, uh, at Canmore, we had to, to remove tons and tons of rock debris after, from one of our big structures after the big storm. So that's, that's just reality. But we like to think this will, will get us through the, the tough parts and get the fish up the, up the river, which is the main point. Well, Dave, I really liked your product. Good. I thought it was Thank outstanding. You. And I'm going to take your challenge. Great. I'm, I'm Thank gonna you very much. I'm going to try to put $100,000 in my budget next year just to fix perched culverts. Yeah. And I must say, it's Ron? Right. Right. Rod has really already done this. You saw the, the, big, the big structure in, uh, in Chilliwack. I mean, you've done it, but you, you, you get it, is what I'm saying. Thank you. You know what would really help me is if you could go to DFO and get pre-approval for these products. <laughs> and then we don't have to go through that long environmental <laughs> process. Well, you know what, I mean, we're, we're working on that. As I mentioned, we, we have been working with Inland Waters on a lot of this research at the University of Manitoba. Uh, as I do my university presentations, uh, we say to them, look, whatever you do, take, don't do all the math, uh, design this thing. Go and talk to DFO first and make sure that this is or isn't a spawning stream. And then the point is, as we did in Chilliwack, if we can stay outside, we can build these much larger structures and stay out of the stream, then everybody's happy. So it, we're, we're making it easier, but it's a challenge. Stephen, you've been very quiet. Get in there. Do the, uh, do the fish friendly, um Ladders or elevators work just as well with concrete pipes as they do with steel? Not worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm, sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm a little biased in my views, and, that, and that's and that's where they're I, not the you, right color. No, you may have noticed. You may have noticed the uh, a lot of the uh, uh, baffles in some of the structures I showed are in fact concrete. Uh, the more technical question: the velocities are different. So the corrugations actually are very positive to affecting the, the, the velocities. Yeah, so corrugations I, I, is a positive. In all seriousness, but I don't want to get too much time off it. I do have a whole issue around how, how is the process going to work? I mean, if you're selling the, you know, you're, you're speaking for CPCSI, um, but it's about the engineering. Someone must have the products available and maybe these ones are particularly a little bit ugly the way they're looped up and sitting in there and that may not be for all environments. So um, I like the idea. Um, but it seems to me that the devil might be in the detail. And, and, well, of course, and it's my member companies that will be making them and selling them. Uh, but just one line, I, I, for what one time I used to mold plastic, and I was doing some pig stalls, and I got involved with a, a Mennonite fellow, and I said, well, I can even show you how to make a mold. And I said, but you've got to realize, any scratches on the mold, it's going to, the scratches are going to show up in the plastic. And his response, and I was going to give the same response to you, the pigs don't care. You know, the fish don't care. This is about fish and making it happen. So that's important. Michelle, do you, thank you. Michelle, do you want to have the final word? Just a, just a quick question. Yes. Uh, you know, this is very much a prototype still. And I was wondering, 
what have you envisaged in terms of the rollout? Uh, it seems. Well, it's a, uh, we're, we've been building very similar structures. We're, we're building the polymer coated plate is on the market now. It's in several of the provincial specifications. So we uh, expect to roll this out uh, in the new year. It's just the equipment's there, the, uh, it, it's all in place. Uh, it's, it's, it's really basic fabrication is what we do every single day with our coders. We have a coder that's on uh, one of our association members. So it's, it's there. So just, uh, if you go and talk to any of my members, uh, they, they'll take the orders and we deliver them. We have a fish window that closes in one week. So, uh, but if you can get that in the, this week, we can look after it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, congratulations thank on you. being able to get $100,000 out of Rod. I know it can't be easy. <laughs> 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 Michelle's been working on him for a long time for the association. He's not getting anywhere. But you <laughs> need to come to the University of Waterloo. I do. I'm a, gra <laughs> I'm a graduate of the University of Waterloo. So okay. I, can I put your name down. We're going to do that. For sure. Excellent. Thank, thank you, you David. <laughs> Have a hand for David. Now you guys get to be involved. I, I personally don't eat fish, but if you have anything that makes a steak taste better, I'm, I'll buy that. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's your guys' turn again. Number one is yes. Number two is no. Well done, and uh, some final uh, wisdom from the Lions. Anybody particular, or was that what all? What kind of truck does he drive? What kind of truck do you drive? <laughs> a Dodge. A Dodge yes. <laughs> In fact, it's yellow. You saw it go into a. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time for our final uh, innovator, uh, presenting Auto Turn Rail 3D. Here's Milton Carrasso, President and CEO of Transsoft Solutions. Come on, you can do better than that for Milton. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alliance, for being here. Um, I'm kind of nervous for many reasons. Uh, first of all, I see a whole bunch of empty rows of seats over here, and I, I kind of wondered what happened to all of them. Uh, the other thing is I, I've been sitting here and I've been the last presenter and I was told by Simon I couldn't go to the washroom. So, you know, if I cross my legs, you know what I'm doing. I should have worn black pants. <laughs> I also have never spoken to an audience this large. So, you know, you know, I've only had about 30 people in my largest group. So if the rest of you would like to leave, you know, you feel free. <laughs> and lastly, you know, when I talk to my wife, she never listens anyway, so. <laughs> well, I'm here to talk about Auditon Rail 3D, and uh, Alliance, I've got a deal for you, so I'd like deal. to, yeah, you better believe it. I have an opportunity, an investment opportunity of a lifetime for you. You know, the, the likes of App, Apple and Google are gonna pale in comparison. <laughs> And we definitely are not going to be like has beens like you know who. <laughs> I won't mention. <laughs> um, well, first I'm going to talk about the market uh, out there. And it's about the light rail transit market. It's a growing, uh, a very rapidly growing market, as we all know. Uh, world over is, is putting out literally hundreds of LRT development projects out there. At the moment, there's something like 400 LRT systems in the world, uh, over half of which are in the developed uh, world. There's about 60 of them under construction at this very moment, and over 200 in the initial planning stages. Globally, we talk about an infrastructure growth of about 5% from 7 billions, 
per annum to, to about 9 billion by 2017. We're talking a lot of money that's going into this industry. Here's a very quick breakdown of the market. So we're seeing uh, Western Europe leading the charge. And for all of you who've been out to Western Europe, you've seen what it's like. You got, um, obviously, the North Americans, the Americas, as well, Asia coming on stream very fast. And so this whole growth is happening globally. It's not just in, in one uh, particular area. Typically, your product ranges from about a $10 million to $100 million per kilometer. On average, about $30, kilom 30 million per kilometer, producing engineering fees of between three and $5 million per kilometer. It's all on a kilometer basis because um, projects vary in size. My goal today is to show you how Auditon Rail 3D can enhance the design process and make you more profitable. The problem in this particular product that we are, we're putting out it's, that it is addressing relates to clearance analysis. Clearance analysis is a standard requirement in uh, alignment designs. For anybody who does design of, uh, of uh, LRT uh, projects, you're dealing with clearances, clearance envelopes to ensure safe, sorry, this clicker just doubled up on me, but uh, basically safe passage of trains through a project. The areas of clearances you're looking at are platforms, structures, um, tunnels, bridges, catenary, a lot of areas that require a project uh, to be assessed for. Currently, a lot of this, pro this analysis is done manually. And a lot of it is based on judgment. People, a designer would, uh, an experienced designer would be looking at a location for where to do the analysis, look at that particular zone, and conduct his analysis to look for that clearance of that particular area. It's, it's very tedious, manual, use of spreadsheets and other tools. You know, potential for errors exists because you're not checking the entire project. Uh, each calculation takes several man hours of work. So what I'm going to show you is, can you produce this level of details, analysis and details, in 30 minutes or less? I'm just going to go through some screenshots. Uh, unlike culverts, you know, software isn't a very sexy business here, but <laughs> um, I'm going to show you some of the screenshots that the software will produce in a matter of minutes and, and seconds, basically. And I'm going to go back to this in more detail uh, through a video. So we'll see a little bit more about this. So now you can do a lot of this with Auditon Rail 3D. What, what we just saw what could be accomplished in literally minutes. Well, what, before I go there, let's talk about what's underlying Auditon Rail 3D in terms of technology. It is based on Autoturn, the world's leading um, and proven vehicle simulation software. Uh, it has been used to set the design templates for Ashto, the Ostroads, as well as in the TAC uh, last generation of manual. It uh, is used by over 30,000 users worldwide in, in about 120 countries or more. And it is, we have a patent pending Auditon 3D uh, engine that is, is, has been, uh, we've applied for a patent on. The, the first version that we have is an analysis and design uh, cross-section um, production um, system, which looks at the dynamic and static envelopes of uh, LRT cars as they travel along an alignment. It works directly within Civil 3D, so it's doing a 3D analysis as it produces uh, these, uh, this analysis. Sorry, It's an add-on to AutoCAD-based products. It was released in July 2013, so just recently. 
And the future vision of this product, which I cannot give you all the details because some of my competitors happen to be in the audience, <laughs> is to do a full, flat, or full package planning and design solution here. It is highly accurate. It's the only tool of its kind out there that we are aware of. It fully automates methods that were previously done in a manual way. It works with it with your own design data, so alignments, profiles, and super elevation. It'll calculate the L LRVs in swing and out swing with respect to that design. It computes the 3D uh, vehicle st static and dynamic envelope. And it draws the cross sections automatically. So all of this work is being done simply with the flick of a mouse. So I'm just gonna, can we please have the video, show you a quick video of how it all comes together. Engineers need to exercise the utmost due diligence when designing new or extending existing light rail transit lines. Extreme care must be given to optimize the layout, ensure the design meets safety standards, apply value engineering, and minimize project expenditures. When designing a light rail track alignment, engineers are required to analyze and visualize clearances of the light rail vehicle in its proposed alignment. This is a very manual and time-consuming exercise, and if changes are made, the process is repeated, wasting valuable time, energy, and money. Does this process sound familiar to you? Transoff Solutions is proud to introduce AutoTurn Rail 3D, the world's first 3D rail simulation and analysis software of its kind. Now, engineers can quickly generate static or dynamic vehicle envelopes to help them identify potential clearance conflicts with their proposed designs. Featuring patent-pending technology, AutoTurn Rail 3D will dramatically reduce design time by streamlining what was once an intensely manual process. With AutoTurn Rail 3D, designers can quickly generate 2D and 3D vehicle simulations from the horizontal and vertical geometry and cant and super elevation. Utilize a light rail vehicle's static or dynamic envelopes to generate the swept path clearance envelopes essential to the clearance analysis task. Manage and generate structure cross-section envelopes representing tunnels, trenches, platforms, and other structures along applicable lengths of the design alignment, which can then be checked against the vehicle's clearance envelopes. Generate cross-section reports anywhere along the alignment, showing clearance envelope in-swing and out-swing caused by horizontal curvature and or rotation due to cant and superelevation, and where applicable, the relation of the vehicle clearance envelope to a structure cross-section. Play an animation of the vehicle simulation to see the vehicle moving along the proposed alignment then export this simulation to Envision to produce videos that can be shown to stakeholders. Okay, so Otterton Rail, uh, you know, it's very difficult to estimate its uh, level of productivity, but it's, it's when you look at these numbers, it will show that it can be as much as 100 times more productive than in the current systems. Um, here's a quick example. It takes about four hours to do a, a single analysis, not including coffee breaks. Um, using Autoton Rail 3D, the first analysis would take 30 minutes to set it up, and essentially every one after will take less than a minute. you pretty much your return on investment, initial investment on assuming that there is about a 30 points of check on a, on a single project will be a three times return on your investment. 
could you benefit from a, lab uh, a reduction of labor costs by up to eight to 200 times? I'm sure you can. Light rail is the future, and Arton Rail, in my, in, in my opinion, is your solution. Dramatically reducing design costs, improve the quality of your work, and gain peace of mind. As far as the theme for this conference goes, it's better because it, it produces comprehensive design checks. The better quality design checks than any other method currently available. And it's easy to cope with design changes as well as easy to use. It's faster because it performs analysis in 108 to 1 200th of a, the current systems. Uh, complete entire project analysis in a day versus 20 days or more. Safer because what you see is what you get. It produces the quality checks, way higher confidence in your design, and definitely produces a safer project overall. Can an analyze the entire uh, uh, project in a mere minutes. If you use it in, conjun in conjunction with Navis work, it instantly gives you uh, clash points, uh, conflict points, uh, reports. A quick financial analysis shows, yeah, maybe there's about 10,000 designers globally. Uh, if we go for a market share of about 2,000 in tw a 20 percent market share in 10 years, we're looking at about a $30 million uh, revenue with an EBITDA of 20 percent, which is very easily attainable in the software sector. You're looking at $6 million, which uh, gets you between a business value between six and 10 million. And I'm asking for a million dollars for a 20 percent piece of the action. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> it's a good deal, right? So, Lions, I want to thank you for your time and uh, audience as well. And thank you for time and trusting me with your money. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you. Thank you. My favorite part of your video was the guy with the headache. I know. We do. We do <laughs> if you had paper floating around your office, you'd have a headache too. Like that. <laughs> if paper floats around the office, your, your place is haunted. You know? We've got three minutes. Let's start. You, I'm sure uh, glad you mentioned at the end you're looking for an investment because my eyes were glossing over and I was starting to nod off because you're trying to sell me a, what I thought you were trying to do is sell me a product that could be useful to me. But clearly, with when you look at the stats that you presented at the beginning, five of these systems in Canada, 6% in North America, like who is your audience? And uh, so I would have put more up front. I'm trying to get you to invest in this product. Uh, I would have invested more time in your presentation as to who all your customers are across the world. Do you have some of those contacts now? What are the likelihood of you being able to sell your product to uh, clients across the world, especially in Europe and Asia, where this is really growing? Uh, okay, well, I guess maybe I ought to have done a corporate history before I got there. So just to let you know, Transoft is based in, in Europe at, in Rotterdam. Our head office is in Vancouver, and we have an office in, in uh, Australia. We cover the globe 24-7. About 40% of our business is in Europe. Okay. We pretty much have every engineering company that uses Auditurn, and so we use that as our lead-in. Well, Zoltan, I thought your presentation was fantastic, and unlike Doug, who speaks for his generation, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about rail service, and I think uh, any piece of software that can make the design uh, better is, uh, is a good thing. Thank you for the BC support. <laughs> well, and I guess I'll continue. You guys are both of a different generation from me, so there you go. <laughs> teasing, teasing. Um, I can't give you money, but I can give you cheap labor to test your software. I can help you with that. But um, one of the, the things that I wondered, because one of our concerns is um, with software, and I think the software is great, and you did a great job presenting it, is um, how do you validate the designs? How do you incorporate experience? Because good engineering and good design is a lot of experience. So we can do the calculations, but how oh, do you incorporate? Sorry. Yeah, okay. 
I forgot to turn my phone off. <laughs> His phone's ringing. <laughs> it's a customer. Someone it's a in the audience. Uh, sorry, it, it's, it just happened to be Warren Buffett, so I just yeah, have to take this off. <laughs> yeah, hi, Warren. <laughs> yeah. Can't handle the technology? <laughs> He's getting a call in bid. You know Warren. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So how do you incorporate um, the experience? Because I think that's a really important aspect with software. You can plug and chug, but how do you know we, it's incorporating that experience? Yeah, well, what, what we did was they muted me because they thought it was a real phone call. <laughs> uh, what we did was um, we had a, an experienced engineer test out a manual method, his, his approach against the software. And so that's how we were able to prove, prove the software correct. Sorry. I really, I mean, I, from a technical point of view, the software looks like a great idea for me. And, and in our corporate, for our, we, like, we don't invest. I'm not going to invest right. our money in a business like yours. We're buyers of the services. We have a lot of engineers doing LRT designs for us right now and looking at a lot more of it. Um, I want to better understand here in this forum if what you're looking for us is investment. We're not, I'm not interested in investment at all. Um, but I would like to know is find out is your business model, how does it, did you sell to engineering companies who yes. will then come and work for us? Yes, and, and, and that's that exactly thing. what I need you to do, is to make sure the engineering company is using our software so you can get a break on your cost. So do I get a break <laughs> then, if I get them to use your software? You, you better demand it from them. <laughs> yes, in effect, software is intended to produce productivity, and productivity yeah. should No, I, I realize in your presentation that the, the software looks like a fantastic idea. Right. The way you presented it to me, I'm, I'm now I'm sort of starting to understand, I think, how you're going to work here. Yes. I wouldn't mind following up later and finding out more. Well, um, but sort of the ask and the way you presented it isn't the way sure. that it's clear to me exactly. Sure, sure. How for, this for you forward. as the um, uh, We're the construction, developer of LRTs. The construction um, development side of the business, you obviously should see the savings that the engineer realizes right. in your. Right, so, so we can tell our engineering to, companies they're yeah. charging us way too much? Yes. Because <laughs> that's there's clear. There's 700 of them sh pointing at me. <laughs> Michelle, you look skeptical. Doctor, I just have a, a question, quick question on the software. Have you thought of building in some kind of validation process using, uh, you know, experts? You know, you're taking a lot of tedious work out of design. But there is certainly value in having those experts involved in, in the process because <laughs> software can generate mistakes. Right. And how have you uh, looked at, at uh, risk uh, management? Well, there's two things we do. One, one, one of which is um, we have a beta test group. So we, we do pre-launch, pre we test the product out amongst potential um, users who use the software on projects live. We're also working with Bombardier to also get that kind of um, approval process uh, looked at in terms of validating the software. So it, it occurs through the process. A lot of it pre-launch and then subsequently after launch. That's great. Okay. Thank you, Milton. Now it's time for you guys to vote. Good job. Number one, yes. Number two, no. Uh, final words of wisdom from the Lions. I want to hear from all five of you before we wrap. I don't know. Either the presentations are getting better or we're getting softer. I thought we went a lot easier on them this than, year than, than we did this last year. Last year? Yeah. 
Rod, it's your first time up. What did you think? Oh, the presentations were great. Um, I'm impressed by the technology. I think uh, the voting really helped the crowd get into it. So mm -hmm. it was very good. Yeah. I, I think all of the presentations uh, talked about better, faster, safer, which was their job. Um, so that was really good. It wasn't always clear what they were asking from us. So uh, some were a little bit clearer than others. So I think in the future, so maybe that's something we'll work on in the future. Is yeah, clarity. that's good. Michelle, positive experience. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Mm -hmm. I would have to. I would have to reiterate and, and without belaboring it, my colleagues here. Each one of them a very different aspect of our industry, mm -hmm. but very relevant to the industry. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my compliments to all four. I thought it was Great. very well put together. How about a hand for all your presenters? Yeah. <laughs> and a hand for your Lions who've donated their time and expertise. Thank you very much. No applause for me, I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, it was my pleasure to uh, host uh, the Lions Den again. I'd like to uh, call on Doug back to the dais to thank the Lions and to, uh, to tell you a little bit more about your day. Thanks. Thank you very much, Simon. You're done now, right? All right. Simon is done, so let's give him a great round of applause. Nice to see you. Hope to see you back next year. How's your French, by the way, because we're going to Montreal. Oh, good. Here we go. Probably a lot better than mine. <laughs> Thank you very much, Simon. This session would not have been a success without the participation of a great group of diverse participants representing the TAC membership. Your willingness to participate allowed all of us to experience firsthand the dynamics involved in making our transportation systems better, faster, and safer. Just a few housekeeping items before you head out the door. Don't forget to visit the TAC exhibition during dedicated exhibition time, including from now until lunch. Check your program for details on the exhibitor, exhibitor presentations. There's more than 60 of them. A variety of TAC awards will be presented at today's lunch in this room. Doors open at noon. Afternoon sessions and panel discussions will start at 2.15. Tonight's local showcase, Hockey Night in Winnipeg, promises to be a very fun event. Wear your favorite team jersey as we celebrate Canada's national sport with good food, good entertainment, and good times. Shuttles will be running from the conference hotels to the Winnipeg Convention Center. Have a productive conference, and thank you for joining us today and for the rest of the week. Bon dernier, mesdames et messieurs. Thank you.